where's the tea? <laughs> Are people still saying that? Hello friends, I am back. This week I am planning on working on my Peacoat project. It has been um, approximately two weeks since I interfaced all of the fabric for this project. So it's just basically been sitting on hold. A couple weeks ago, I released my newest pattern, the Bridget Tee, and then I did a sew along for that last week. So now I am back in peacoat sewing mode. It's been starting to feel like spring around here. So I was starting to kind of lose a little bit of my mojo for this coat project, but we're supposed to be getting a big winter storm coming through and the temperatures are already dropping, which is renewing my spirit for a coat project. Really feel like I really just want to sit on the couch and watch movies today, but I'm not, I'm going to kind of get it into high gear here and start cutting out some pieces for this coat. I really want to get this coat finished in the next week or two. Anyhow, I'm going to get started and uh, see how far I can get today. Okay. the changes that I wanted to make to the pattern pieces for this trench coat is to take out a little bit of the shaping. I want to have a little shaping in there, but I don't want it to be quite as shaped as the trench coat. So I just added a little ease here along the side seam, tried to make it match up a little bit better with this piece because when I drafted this, like the, the kind of side dart situation was a little bit wonky. So um, I just, you know, kind of trued that side a little bit and then also sort of made it match up here so that when these pieces are sewn together, you know, that will match up a little bit better. That's one of the things I did. I also decided to add six inches to the overall length because the blazer that this pattern is based off of hits right about at my hip. I kind of want this to hit at the mid thigh. So I'm adding six inches here. That'll give me a little bit for hemming plus approximately like four inches to give it that sort of mid thigh length. So here's the blazer that that pattern is based off of. I traced this blazer to create that trench coat pattern. And as you can see, it hits right, right at my like butt cheek area. And I would like it to just kind of hit right down here, which is about four or five inches. I think that'll be the length that I really like. got all of the pieces cut out. Okay, I have sound. I've got all the pieces cut out for the shell of my jacket. I realized the same way that I did when I made my freaking trench coat that I forgot to take into account the inseam pockets that I want to have on the front of the jacket. So the bodice has kind of a princess seam. I mean, it's not like a really shaped princess seam, but it has a princess seam across the front. On my trench coat, I did add inseam pockets to that princess seam, but I had to go in and kind of retroactively add facings for the pockets. And I told myself at that point that I was going to add a little extension on the pattern pieces for those pocket facings. I forgot to do that again. It's not a huge deal, but it is just gonna add a little bit of extra bulk there because I want the facings to be the wool material so that, you know, if you do happen to see the facings of the pocket, it just looks like the jacket material. One thing that I also really like to do for wool coats is do welt pockets. I just think they look so good on a wool coat. And so one idea that I had was doing an inseam welt pocket. So it would be along the seam line, but then it would have kind of a, you know, visible welt, like a single welt pocket. But I'm kind of at that point where I'm like, gosh, I'm feeling a little bit of analysis paralysis and like, I don't really want to investigate it too much. So I think I might wait to cut anything out or make any decisions about that today and spent a little time researching. I actually went online and just Googled inseam welt pocket. And I found a blog post on the Closet Core Patterns website, which looked pretty helpful. So one thing with welt pockets, they're not hard to do, but there are a lot of little steps and like trying to visualize the way, like the position of the welt opening and where that final welt pocket 
facing is going to be showing. It's just hard to visualize it. So I always find it really helpful to do like a little welt pocket sample. That also helps with sizing the pocket too. Uh, I think that'll just kind of help me wrap my head around it a little bit. And um, yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'll also kind of decide whether I'm gonna do a welt pocket or just do a regular inseam pocket. Maybe I'll just spend the rest of today editing some footage and kind of getting prepped for tomorrow. I do feel good. I got most of my pieces cut for the shell. And um, also tomorrow, in addition to doing the welt pocket, maybe I'll also kind of sit down and figure out how I want to do my horsehair canvas for the front lapel. I am going to do some pad stitching on that. I mentioned that a couple of videos back. I think it's a good idea for me to kind of break it down and sort of study the technique a little bit and, um, you know, not try to do it all at once because what will happen is I'll get tired and I'll get frustrated and I'll start making kind of like rash decisions about, you know, which direction I want to take things. And I want to make sure that this jacket turns out the way that I really want. And then I'm really happy with the end result. So I'm really going to take my time, even though I know, like, I really just want to get this coat finished, but I'm going to take my time with it. Um, I can hear my dog in the living room tearing something up. I don't know what he's doing, but he's obviously crying for attention. I'm going to go tend to him now and I will see you guys tomorrow, which will be a few moments for you. Are you trying to start some drama? Huh? What are you tearing up in there? What are you doing? Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. Go get your toy. Where's your toy? Oh my gosh. What a meanie. God, he's mean. He's vicious. So it's the next day I am going to start working on an inseam welt pocket sample. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. So I've just got two scraps of fabric here that I've sewn right sides together. I also marked one as the front and one as the side to kind of help me wrap my brain around which way to fold and press things um, when I get it on the jacket. I'm still on the fence about whether or not I actually want to put a welt pocket on this jacket because even when I was sitting here about to like do this sample I was like man really don't feel like doing this right now, but I do want to just kind of see it through and see how I feel about it because this may end up being too bulky as well. And if that's the case, maybe it is better off just to do a simple inseam pocket for this jacket. And hopefully this doesn't take me too long. So I went ahead and marked out the location of where the welt is going to be. And I want the welt to be right up against the seam line here. So I just marked my box. And then I also marked cut lines for where I will cut this once I get the welt part of the pocket opening sewn onto here. So I have another piece of fabric here that is the width of the welt opening that I want plus an inch on either side. So that ended up being eight inches wide. And then I just made this five inches tall and I'm kind of just guesstimating at this point. I'm not sure exactly how deep I want this to be. I know that I want my welt, the finished welt to be an inch. This is an inch tall by six inches wide. Um, so I'm probably gonna end up trimming this, but I just wanted to give myself plenty of fabric to play around with. So I think I want to flip this over and attach my pocket facing right side together with this side. And I've got the edge lined up with the seam line. So I'll just do a seam from here. I've marked kind of one inch from each edge here. I'm gonna do a seam here along this line, one inch from the seam line, and then I will see if that works. So I decided to seam rip open the location where the pocket opening is going to be. Um, and now I just want to open up the welt location. And originally I had drawn, I don't know if you can really see this very well on here, but originally I had drawn like cut lines. So basically I would cut a line here. So what I think I'm going to do actually is I'm going to move that cut line up a little bit so that it's kind of centered between here and the edge here. And then I will do that because I want to keep this intact up to this corner here. So let me just trim that really quick. And then I'm just going to trim diagonally to the corner here and do the same thing for the other side. Pull that away. And then I'm also going to trim diagonally to these corners here. And you can kind of see my, I tried to use a contrast thread, but it's not really showing up as well. But that's the end of the thread there where I stopped my thread. I want to trim right to that corner on both sides. If I did this right, I should be able to turn this piece here that I just sewed to the wrong side. Okay. Ooh, I think this might work. So now I've turned that to the wrong side. This is where the original seam line was that I ripped open. 
these pieces will eventually be folded under. So I've got this turned over. So now I've got these edges all pressed down. I can fold the pocket welt here. So basically I want to fold this right sides together until that fold meets up with the seam edge there that I originally, that I just seam ripped. So I'm just going to fold that, get it nice and tight against there and press it. And if we flip this over, I still have some finishing stitching to do, but if we flip this over, yeah, okay. So now you can see, I really like that actually. That looks really, really good. So now you can see that that welt, that this is the piece that we just folded. Okay, so now I need to add an actual pocket facing to the wrong side of this. So I've cut a piece that is, again, eight inches wide, and this one is three inches tall this time, because when I flip this over, that will align with those pieces there on the back. I'm basically gonna sew it to the opening here on the seam allowance on the other side. Okay, so here's the T. <laughs> Are people still saying that? Anyway, I, I'm not gonna finish this sample because I've decided that it's adding way too much bulk. I don't think I'm gonna be happy with it in the jacket. I think it's just gonna be way too much bulk right there at the hip, just because this wool is a little bit thicker and you know I need to have these pieces interfaced. So I'm gonna abandon this and I'm just gonna go with a very simple inseam pocket. But damn, this turned out really, really good. It turned out really, really pretty. Even though I wasn't feeling super enthusiastic about this, I'm actually glad I did it because now I know what it looks like. And um, I know that it can be a really nice finish for the right project. I don't think this is the right project for it. So I'm abandoning the welt pocket. I'm gonna go with the inseam pocket on the jacket. But I'll give you a little demonstration just to show you what we did here. So there's that welt. There is that facing that I just sewed on. And if I was gonna continue with this, I would basically stitch here on these two folded sides to attach the welt so it doesn't kind of come out like that. You kind of want to secure that in there. And then the pocket bag would attach here to the facing. And then down here on the bottom of that welt piece. So the pocket bag would basically kind of go down and back up. Um, but we're not doing it. So anyway, but now we know how to do an inseam welt pocket. <laughs> I'd also mentioned that I found a blog post on the Closet Core Patterns website. I'll put a link to that because they do an, they do an inseam welt pocket. Although I did find it a little bit confusing to follow. What was really helpful for me was just to follow a regular welt pocket tutorial that I found on, oh gosh. Oh, Workroom Social. So Workroom Social has some really, really great resources as well. I'll put a link to that blog post. And I've actually used that welt pocket tutorial in the past to help me on other projects with welt pockets. I'm sure if you Googled it here on YouTube as well, you could find some really great tutorials. That's what I usually do when I'm kind of feeling a little stuck. I just start using the old Google machine and finding blog posts and YouTube videos to kind of help me, you know, stagger through these things. So anyhow. Okay, so it is Thursday, it's the next day, and I have been working on prepping the front panel of the front bodice. I'm using horsehair canvas or hair canvas to reinforce the lapels on the front of the bodice. And to do this, I just kind of cut some horsehair canvas to cover most of the lapel and you know, I kind of tapered it down toward the side here. I don't really need it to go all the way to the edge. And I also went ahead and basted the hair canvas to the panel. I'm using a few different tutorials that I found online. So I've mentioned these before, but Gertie is a YouTuber that has some really great tailoring tutorials on her YouTube channel. I'll share those down in the description below this video. They're pretty easily digestible. They're short little videos on different parts of doing this whole process. So I definitely recommend checking those out. I used an uneven basting stitch to baste this to the front bodice. And this is gonna be a permanent basting stitch. So I had to kind of be careful to not go through the front bodice piece too far. So when you're doing these stitches, a lot of people refer to it as taking a bite out of the fabric. So you're just picking up a few threads of the fabric 
and not going all the way through the fabric so that it doesn't show on the exterior. And because this wool is thicker, it is a lot easier to do that. Although there are a few places where I kind of went a little too far when I was first starting out. So you can kind of see a little bit of a prick mark. Once I kind of got the hang of it, I was able to, to kind of correct that and not have it show through as much on some of the other parts of the front bodice. I also stopped my basting just shy of the roll line on the front bodice because I'm gonna use a different technique for that. So once I got that basted to the front bodice, I then started working on the roll line. I used a catch stitch to attach a piece of twill tape to the roll line. And I actually didn't have the right kind of twill tape, but we are actually having a really big ice storm. Well, we had an ice storm last night and it is so icy out. I was gonna go to Joanne Fabrics today, but I ended up not doing that because of the weather. And anyway, but I did have a little bit of twill tape left in my stash. It's not really the perfect kind for tailoring, but I think it'll work just fine. So I used that and I um, cut a length that is the same length as the roll line on this front lapel. I attached that to that location just an eighth inch behind the roll line. I pinned that twill tape to the top and the bottom of the roll line and then I marked on the twill tape and the canvas a location that I can use as a reference point. Then I unpinned at the top and just stretched that twill tape about a quarter inch to add a little extra tension to the roll line. And this is gonna help that lapel kind of curve over the chest a little bit better. So you can see that it's just kind of pulling that up just a little bit. Then I just pinned the roll line at different spots along that twill tape just to kind of evenly distribute that tension across the roll line. Then I attach the twill tape to the canvas and again, just catching a little bit of the wool underneath with a catch stitch. So what I'm doing here is alternating on either side of the twill tape, doing a little back stitch. So I'm kind of stitching in the opposite direction of the direction that the stitch is going, if that makes sense. And picking up a little bite of the wool underneath the hair canvas and then going to the other side. And I continue this process along the entire length of the twill tape. And again, I'm just making sure to evenly distribute that tension that is created by the twill tape along the entire roll line. So now that I've got the roll line reinforced, I can start doing the pad stitching for the lapel. Now the pad stitching is gonna help that lapel fold over naturally across the bust. Sometimes you need a little extra help to get that nice crisp roll line there. And um, I've done this before on a blazer and I actually, I didn't do as good a job on it before. I was really, I think I kind of rushed the process a little bit. I did it on my Jessica blazer and it did okay, but I really wanted to take my time with this one and get it right. So I started out by marking off a series of lines on the lapel that were parallel to the roll line. I started with about four lines that were an eighth of an inch apart. And then I did all the lines until I got to the tip of the lapel, a quarter inch. And then once I got to the tip of the lapel, I did eighth inch lines. So the idea is that you stitch really close together right next to the roll line. And then you can kind of spread your stitches out a little bit once you get to the middle of the lapel. Then I used a basically a diagonal basting stitch to start forming the shape of the roll line. You want the roll to be a little bit more um, acute. I don't know if that's the right term for this, but you want the roll to be a little bit um, tighter near that roll line. And I just used that diagonal basting stitch to again catch or take a little bite out of the fabric underneath to connect the horsehair to that fabric, to the wool, and um, start to kind of form that line. I'm using pieces of thread that are about the length of my arm, and I'm doing a technique called loving the thread. I'm just running it through my fingers to kind of help release some of the tension in the thread. I don't have any like special wax or anything that I'm using. I'm just trying to use the oils for my hand to make the thread a little bit more pliable and agreeable to work with. To knot my thread before I begin stitching, I'm just sewing the same stitch over and over, maybe like four or five times. Then I will cut the thread tail and let that kind of hide under the canvas. And when I start sewing the roll line, I've got this fabric over my finger and I'm kind of pinching it together to create the roll line. And here, I'm actually probably pinching this a little too tightly, but I kind of loosened my technique a little bit as I got going. 
and I am sewing each stitch by bringing the needle in perpendicular to the roll line and then moving up about an eighth of an inch and sewing again and this starts to create that diagonal stitch line. And I'm just using those lines that I drew on the canvas as my guide for how wide to make, make each of these stitches. And with each stitch I'm making sure to grab just a little bit of the wool underneath making sure that I'm not going all the way through. I just want to attach this canvas to the wool but I don't want to see the stitching on the right side of fabric. When it's time to knot my thread and switch to new thread, I just do the same technique of sewing the same stitch four or five times. Then I will just push the needle through the canvas and out about a half inch away, pull that tight and snip it. That way the tail of the thread is gonna be hidden under the canvas. Then I'll just start a new string of thread the same way, creating a knot hiding the tail under the canvas, and I will continue with my diagonal basting stitch. I have only gotten a couple of ro rows done so far. You know, this is one of those things I was really hoping that I could finish this before the end of this week, and it's taking me a little time, but I've actually been really enjoying doing this process because I've been watching TV shows and movies while I work on this and it's pretty meditative and it's just nice to slow down a little bit. And by keeping it in this rolled position as I'm stitching, I'm kind of training the fabric to, you know, naturally fall along the roll line. And then once you get toward the tip of the lapel, you wanna, you know, condense those stitches a little bit more so that it adds a little bit of a curve to the tip and kind of keeps it flat down. You don't want it to necessarily curve under, you just want it to kind of train to lay you know against the curvature of your chest basically so i'm going to spend the rest of this afternoon working on the pad stitching for these two front bodice pieces i'll do the same thing for the other side if this is something that you're interested in doing i definitely think you should go check out these tutorials that i've been following they're really helpful and they explain things very succinctly i feel like i'm probably butchering the explanation of it i'll put links down in the description to all of the tutorials that i have been referring to for this process all of them are really great. They're very easy to follow and really demystify the process of doing this. It's not often that I sit down and hand stitch anything. So this is one of the reasons that I like, you know, more detailed projects, especially outerwear projects. There are more opportunities to do some of the hand stitching techniques and brush up on some of those hand sewing skills. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is gonna take me a little bit of time. I am gonna try to finish the pad stitching for this video. And then in my next video, I will start getting into more of the final coat construction things, hopefully. Once I finish the pad stitching, it'll hopefully make the roll line, you know, nice and crisp. It doesn't really wanna fold over right along that line. But when I'm done here, it should, you know, fold quite nicely along there and hold its shape really well. Because I do want this to be a nice defined edge for that roll line on this coat and um, really train it into that position. So. Here is the first panel finished. I worked on this last night while I was watching TV. I need to trim all of this. I made this extra wide here at the lapel just in case this kind of, you know, kind of shrunk up a little bit as I was doing the pad stitching. It actually didn't, so I think I'm gonna be okay. You can see here on the back, it's a little bit rippled when where I did those stitches, but I think that's okay. This is really never really gonna show because I'm not ever gonna have this like opened up like this. But now you can see that that just folds over much more naturally. It kind of has that natural fold in it there. On camera, you can really kind of see the, where I basted that. I mean, there's no stitching coming through, but there are a few little kind of pock marks there. Um, I may eventually actually end up removing this basting from here because it doesn't really need to be completely basted to the whole thing. As long as it's basted to the edges, I think it'll be okay. I'm gonna kind of think on that and um, you know, see how I feel about it after I get the shell put together. I just have the other side of the front bodice to do. I'll probably work on that this weekend and just kind of take it easy and put on a good movie and finish working on that. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited to see this kind of coming together. It's just, it's just fun seeing this, this stitching on here. I really like that. See there where I got a little bit more condensed toward the edge of the lapel. It's just gonna kind of help that stay folded under a little bit more. Like if I just kind of let this flop, you can see it kind of has that natural roll to it there. So, and then, underneath here is where that twill tape is and it just kind of helps stabilize that rolled edge the 
roll line there. Anyway, these are all things that are kind of new to me, even though I have done a little bit of tailoring in the past, but I'm definitely learning a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys find this kind of stuff interesting and helpful. So with that said, if you enjoyed today's video and you would like to see more from me, please be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. I think that is all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bye.